Hi, today I'd like to talk about bluegill flies or flies for panfish. Now, I'm going to show you a really simple pattern that has worked really well for me. It's worked well in the state of Wisconsin for bluegills for me. It's worked well here in Malaysia for tilapia for me. Uh, it's worked really well for bluegills for a lot of my other friends that have gotten on this uh, pattern. It's very simple. I hope you guys enjoy this. So let's go through. All you need, I use a number eight hook. You can use even, this is just an Eagle Claw Aberdeen hook, okay? It's a number eight. And the reason why I like a longer hook, it's easier to take it out of the fish's mouth, especially when they inhale it deep, okay? Uh, using brown three out thread so I can really crank down just to make my life easier. Normally I use chenille, today I'm using diamond braid because I'm tying this for tilapia over here in Malaysia. It kind of copies the, the, the freshwater shrimp a little better, okay? And rubber legs, you can use any rubber legs. I'm using these silly legs, okay? So let's get started. It's really interesting how deeply some of these fish eat these flies. Yeah, so it's always a good idea to tie something that you can pull the fly out of the fish's mouth. So I'm going to go with this one. And I want about that length. Okay. So what I'm going to, what, how I'm measuring this is this. Rubber leg should be one, two, and a half times as long as the shank of the hook. Okay. You notice I tied my thread to the center of the shank. So now I'm going to exactly split this evenly here. Ugh. Come to daddy. Okay. There, now we have the tail ends. I'm just gonna gently tie this in. I'm pulling the rubber towards me because as I'm wrapping, it wants to run away. Okay, so you always have to watch how it's rolling as you're wrapping back, okay? You notice I wrapped from the middle of the hook I didn't start from the back. Reason being because uh, panfish love to grab on and uh, to the back of things and just pull. Yeah, and you can lose a lot of uh, perfectly good bugs that way. Now, you could do cross wraps in between here and make these legs really splay out. Yeah, I haven't seen a difference. In fact, I've done better like this. Okay, now. I'm going to tie in my body material, which is this diamond braid. Oh, I got a knot in here. Okay. I'm going to tie it in exactly in line with those legs. Yeah, see where the leg started? Right there. That's where I'm tying this in. Okay. My thread starts back here. Way back with this to make sure it comes together nicely. I don't let the fish see thread. Then I'm going to wrap forward. Try to keep everything on top for a good profile. You don't want this unnecessarily bulky in funny sides. Okay. Okay. Now this is going to be good up here. Now, one more set of legs. Oh, actually, two. Okay. I'm going to cut the rest of this off. Split it in half exactly. Uh, let's make that a little bit more even. Can do better than that. There we go. Okay. So we're going to tie them in cross legged here. Come here. Two, three, just tie this one in. One, two, three. Notice how these kind of sit a little funny, and that's just fine. Okay. Adjust these around a little bit. Go around this way a bit. Come on. Okay. 
come back through crossing okay I'm just trying to get these to really sit out back here right in the middle nope no don't do that okay basically anything you can do to make these sit out I'm gonna tie this back here really make these stand up a little bit and then wrap forward okay now diamond thread okay and get the rest of this so it all comes along there I dropped my fly tying scissors any of the rest of you ever drop stuff on the floor when you're trying to tie yeah it uh, it definitely keeps things interesting inside the fly tying room Okay, I'm just gonna wrap this Oy. forward. Now, initially what I bought this diamond braid for was not for tilapia. I originally bought this to tie egg flies in the driftless region in the States, uh, in, in Wisconsin. But interestingly enough, it works pretty well for copying, I guess, freshwater prawns in certain light conditions here in Malaysia, which is funny, but hey, if it works, don't knock it. Okay, you see how it's fat in the back and skinnier in the front because of all the stuff we did back there? Yeah, okay, now we don't wanna crowd the head, so we're gonna tie this off one, two, three, and then in front, one, two, three, Let's cut this off with the scissors I just dropped on the floor. Come here. Okay, done with that. Now let's clean this up a little bit. I like a tidy fly. Okay, now uh, my whip finisher. We're not done with this yet. We're not done with this yet. One, two, Three, stay there, four. Okay. One, go away. Two, three, that's it. Make the V, push it in, there we go. Make sure this is sitting well. Okay. And so, of course, I'm gonna add super glue to the front so the threads don't come out. Just a touch. Okay. Now, another thing is I'll add it to the center where the eggs are here. I'm sorry, the legs are here. Okay. And that's it. The whole bug, once that glue dries, that bug is set, okay? Uh, of course, you can even out the legs a little bit if you want. Um, I haven't seen that it really matters, okay? And no weight, I fish this on a floating fly line. If you want, because you see it doesn't crowd the, uh, the bend of the book, book, the bend of the hook, yeah? If you are the type that you like to add bait to your flies, you can. I sometimes add bait but basically i the reason i don't go back to the bend of the hook is because it gets a better hold in the fish that way okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh i hope you guys whoever uses the pattern it catches fish for you because it's caught a lot of fish for the rest of us okay cheers best wishes